How to prepare a retrospective? I will use the digital wild board, wild, digital wild board tool, Miro. You can go wild on your whiteboard. The objective is continuous improvement. The objective is not to have the best retrospective from the whole company. Hi, I'm Maria, and this is the Agile State of Mind. Welcome, and welcome to another episode of quick tutorials and how-tos to make our lives easier. Today, I would like to talk about how to prepare a retrospective if you don't want to automate it altogether. And for that, I will use the digital wildboard wild, digital wildboard tool Miro. You can go wild on your whiteboard. Wild. Because after my last video about automating the retrospectives with Parable IO, see the video here, I got some comments from you about the meditative quality of preparing the retrospective. So today, I will explain how we can make them tailor-made, which makes sense, how we can do focused retros, and how to not die first of the boredom, but second in the intent of making them super cool. So I will try to find some semi-automated ways using some cheat sheets, copying retrospectives that other people do, and how we can make them fun and productive. Let's see. Before we go there, I wanted to give kudos to Marcus, who wrote his comment below the previous video, and he said that the preparation of the retro is an important part too. It is some kind of meditation, how the team is working, where the current threats are, and what would be good to achieve during the meeting. And he explained how he tailors the retros for the team, making them creative and appealing, based on what has been going on during the time from last retrospective. For example, he created a Star Trek theme retro, he wanted to offer the team a wider perspective. Sounds interesting, doesn't it? This goes into another comment from Jyoti, who asked to see a video on the preparation I do for the retro. So today, I will explain a bit how I do it if I don't use the automated retrospective from Parable, and what is important to take into account. One disclaimer, though, it is great to create tailor-made retrospective, create some gamification, but we shouldn't lose our focus from the goal. The objective is continuous improvement. The objective is not to have the best retrospective from the whole company. So we need to take that into account, how much time we actually want to spend on creating super cool retrospectives and how much time we actually want to invest on real improvements and making sure that the team is not only finding a lot of entertainment on our retros, but they actually take some action and they see the improvement. We encourage the team to enact on any topics that they are unhappy with and they change and that's when we win, even though our retrospectives are as boring as hell. After that disclaimer, I will explain how we can make them tailor-made, how we can do focused retros. It's great to have a theme, like Marcus did. He had some issues and he thought, oh, Star Trek would be a great solution to do like a metaphor of what the team is going through. Another option is to do focus retros. I like to do them when I see that the team is struggling with a particular topic. And believe it or not, but more often than not, a new team that I start working with would struggle with it daily. You can identify the anti-patterns that, by the way, I described in my video here, and you see that the team is usually struggling with the same problems. Nobody's having fun. Nobody's enjoying the daily meeting. That's why another tip, I prefer walking the board, and you have all why here. So what I try to do is, okay, let's do simple retrospective, but focused only on how we can improve the daily meeting. So let me share the screen and let's see how Miro works. Okay, so now you should be able to see my screen. And this is Miro. I have the free version here. You can have three boards. So the boards are infinite. For those who never use Miro, here you go to the board. See, I have some stuff already here that I was doing. And now we can take some space somewhere far away and start creating stuff. What we usually will be using is different colors of post -it. You just click and you can write. Then shapes, shapes help to create a container for the post-its that you want to start using. And then you can change the colors of the shape. So let's make them a little bit fun. And then you can change the opacity. Let's make it white inside. And what we need to do is to bring the post-it to front. And this way it's on top of it. So this is how we create stuff. And where do we take the ideas to do it? As I said, I went on the LinkedIn because I saw so many great retrospectives there and I just put 
with retrospective and mirror in the search, people use Monopoly, Star Wars. Then we have some classic templates, like with the boat. In mirror, you can also do some great visualizations for the typical classic template. You can also create very simple shapes like I started doing. You can do very complex ones, the radar retrospective. This is actually very fun. It's like the Looney Tunes retrospective. You can find inspiration on LinkedIn. And then there is Miroverse. Whoever is passionate about creating new retrospective workshops and so on, you can upload them to Miroverse. So those are great things that Miro provides and also keeps the users in Engaged. As you see, this is the retrospective we saw from Johanna. And then we have many others. Okay, so we are back at our retrospective. One of the ways to find photos for free and beautiful photos, you can go here and in Unsplash. And whatever you consider that is the best analogy to your team. For example, I don't see a team on the daily. I see just people talking. So what you can do, you can just find a few photos. For example, I like this one. You can download it for free and then just use the creds and give a shout out to the author. Remember we talked about in my videos about retrospectives that at the beginning of the retro, we want everyone to talk. We can start with the team. Like what is a team for you? How would you describe an awesome team that you would like to take part of? I write here what I would like people to talk about. And this is a question that everybody would need to answer. We can ask them to write it on the post-it or we can just go do a round robin. So that would be the first one. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then we go and we start talking about collaboration. Oh, I like this one. Do we want to row in the same direction or everybody is just rowing on their own? This is a great metaphor for the teamwork. So this is a starter for the conversation. And afterwards, we can use a simple start, stop, continue new format. Copy this. If you do command D on your Mac, it's directly duplicated. Uh, we do the simple format of start, stop, continue. I try to put different colors. So what we want to start would be green. And then what we want to stop doing would be red and continue yellow. So after deciding that the warm up will be about the team and what's the team feeling, what we want to do is to have the team think about what they want to start doing from what they said that is a great team, what they want to implement on the dailies so they feel they are this great team. Then we think about what we want to stop doing, what we do, but it doesn't help. It doesn't provide any value and it is preventing us from being this awesome team. Last but not least, what we want to continue doing, what we already do and makes us a better team. One thing I would like to mention here is that from all the things that the team says about the great team, you could create another visual and start thinking along with the team about what would be the ideal of the great team, of the high-performing team in your company. It could be a great goal that the team would like to achieve of course, we put there something that's idealistic and utopian. It's still cool to aim for the stars. Those activities can help you motivate the team, keep them engaged and excited that they have a goal they want to achieve. And whatever they do and however they shape up their processes and their collaboration in everyday life, they are getting closer to being this awesome team. Just to finish on this retro, we are thinking about great team and we are thinking about making the daily meeting great again. We can write those things in big capital letters so we keep our eyes on the goal and that would be it. And then when we start putting the post-it, so we can tell the team to use the post-it as they are with the colors, you can use tags to write the name. I already have my name here. You can see who wrote the post-it, so like this. And then you can also vote on them. So if you go closer, we can vote. I usually just use the thumbs up. And the more people vote on the emoji, the number changes. And then we see how many points each of the emojis got. But you have to zoom in. Otherwise, you won't see it. That would be process of doing a retrospective in Miro. It's pretty simple. As you see, it can look good. It doesn't look awesome, but it looks good enough. And that would be it. Miro is a very straightforward tool. It's pretty intuitive. It's like using a whiteboard, but on 
online so we can be as close as possible to the typical retro that we would have back in time when we were all together in one room. So I hope this helps you to see that whether you automate your retros with Parable or you use Miro, it's easy. You just need a little bit of thought to put to it and you can make great retros with very little preparation. Thanks for watching. Bye bye. Thank you.